I want to give you a little overview. Uh, why CSI and what is it? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the features and benefits of using this CSI driver framework. I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to do a deep dive into the architecture, uh, going to show the API specification. And I also have like an example implementation uh, that I'm going to do, do a little demo around as well. Right. And I also, this is sort of like a call for, he for help. Like if you're interested in what I'm presenting today, uh, this is uh, potential areas of development where we can work together and implement uh, more features into this framework. Let's talk a little bit about the container storage interface, right? So it is a a, a standard. It's a it's a specification on how to basically provision and create storage resources to container orchestrators uh, such as Kubernetes. It allows like third-party storage vendors quite easily to implement a something called a CSI driver without any without touching the Kubernetes upstream code. That makes it very easy for for developers to just get started, write a driver for their um, backend storage appliance, and um, integrate into Kubernetes and into cloud native uh, frameworks. This presentation will abstract this concept further uh, by not even having to know what CSI is and how Kubernetes even works to provide block storage and file storage to a container orchestrator such as Kubernetes. So looking at some of the rudimentary capabilities that Kubernetes provides, you, you have dynamic provisioning of block devices and file systems. Uh, you can create snapshots and clones and use those clones uh, to create new uh, volumes, etc. cetera. Uh, doing online volume expansion directly from Kubernetes, which is quite practical. Uh, you have a concept of ephemeral volumes where you can provision temporary storage to live uh, with the life cycle of your pod uh, and you also have some um, uh, kind of uh, barriers where you can uh, set limits on your uh, how many volumes your driver is capable of uh, provisioning. And uh, a fairly new feature called Volume Health uh, will allow you to monitor the the availability of your backend storage device. And since uh, I'm from Hubble Pack Enterprise, I do want to put in our sales slide here. And I'm also going to show you later in this presentation on how you can turn this uh, slide into your sales slide. And what we have is a CSI driver to our all flash and hybrid storage array, such as HP and Nimble Storage and HP Primera. Uh, we do iSCSI and Fiber Channel out the front today. Uh, we have provisioning APIs over RESTful APIs. And the driver itself, we install it on Kubernetes, and we expose a lot of features from our storage uh, appliances up to Kubernetes. And uh, not only do we provide the ability to format uh, drives with uh, XFS and EXT4, EXT3, and ButterFS, we also allow uh, customers to deploy an NFS uh, server on top of Kubernetes to provide read-write uh, many access to, to your applications. HP Esmeral is our own uh, way of managing Kubernetes uh, and Kubernetes workloads and managing clusters. I've optimized both for uh, stateful uh, legacy applications and cloud native applications. We also have many partners in this ecosystem, such as Rancher and Suzy and uh, Google Anthos and, and Red Hat with the OpenShift container platform. And at the end of the day, what customers care about is the stateful Kubernetes workloads that they will be able to deploy using any of these different platforms. Additional value add to this I want to I want to point out is the data management capabilities that are highly relevant to today when we are at the cloud native data management day, right? Where we partner with Commvault, uh, we integrate with the Casting K10 and we also have a Nimble plugin for Valero, but we're going all in with the CSI implementation that is being provided within Valero. Glancing over this table, kind of give you an idea of the different capabilities that we have within the CSI driver for Kubernetes from HP. Right, We did support dynamic provisioning from day one, and we continually added more features that are available in the CSI spec. And we also provide some value add ourselves by uh, having these uh, CSI sidecars uh, that allow you to mutate volumes, uh, allow you to use consistency group uh, within your uh, applications say that you have an application that are uh, having multiple volumes that you have spread across your cluster and you want to be able to snapshot uh, all those volumes in a group, we allow to do that. And we also have the NFS server provisioner that I recently talked about. 
And some of the capabilities that are currently in the works is to provide volume encryption. Uh, there are uh, basically backend storage agnostics. We're using DMCrypt with Lux on Linux uh, to create uh, that end-to-end -end, uh, volume encryption uh, capability. And we also have replication management in the works, uh, and that will allow you to manage a replication relationship uh, between, between two storage systems uh, directly from Kubernetes. And these are all HPE CSI drive, driver value adds uh, that uh, some of our uh, backends support today and uh, some of the third party ones as well, right? So, looking a little bit about the or uh, around the architecture. Uh, we can see that there are complete separation of concerns here, right? So you have the Kubernetes core team, that's a separate project, and you have Kubernetes SIG storage that kind of governs over the CSI sidecars that uh, provide the uh, provisioner, the attacher, the resizer, and the snapshotter and such. And then you have the external components uh, that any vendor uh, can develop their own driver. They, do a, a, they develop a controller driver, a CSI node driver, and we have taken this abstraction a little bit further, and we have a layer we call a container storage provider. And that container storage provider is nothing but a ephemeral API gateway that talks to a backend storage system. And those are different depending on which backend you're talking to, right? So we have one for nimble storage, we have one for Primera and 3PAR, and we have multiple platforms in the works that will support this framework, right? And that is the essence of what we're gonna talk about today, right? Uh, and the question for the audience is, do your storage solution provide a provisioning API, iSCAS or fiber channel? If you answer yes to those two, then you can write your own container storage provider and jack into this uh, framework. And that is what I'm going to show you in the example in the demo as well, how I wrote a container storage provider for a third party system just to prove the point that this is a multi-vendor and multi-platform uh, CSI driver framework. Uh, we are among friends here today uh, at KubeCon. There are many CSI drivers out there today, right? And I'm not trying to discourage anyone to do just that, right? But we do uh, want to point out a few of the value adds that we have with the HPE CSI driver, right? So first off, you don't have to know anything about Kubernetes. You don't have to know anything about CSI either. And there are a lot of complexity and minutia that you need to take care of when you develop a block storage driver for Kubernetes, right? You need to ensure certain kernel modules are, are loaded on the nodes. You need to ensure certain packages are, are, are installed, services are started, and, and, and things like that. And there are certain um, timeouts that you need to be cautioned, cautious about and, and uh, multipathing. And there are like a slew of things that are pretty complex, right? So if you take these drivers that you see on the screen here and say that half of those are block storage devices, they all have a unique way on how to discover and attach block storage. And I, I can assure you that no, uh, no driver is the same in that regard, right? And they have their own solutions to uh, discover storage, attach storage, make sure the multipath is working and so forth. And to be quite honest, it's quite complex and having unifying that experience uh, both from a support perspective and also from an end user perspective to support multiple backends from a single driver is, is um, I think, is quite an advantage. So the container storage provider specification is a open specification, just as a CSI specification. And HPE CSI driver is, of course, open source, available on GitHub and all those things, right? And, and these are the, the, the handful of endpoints that we uh, expose uh, and that you need to implement in your container storage provider to allow dynamic provisioning, uh, creating snapshots, uh, and creating clones, and so forth, right? But only the top three are, uh, are mandatory, right? So you need to have some sort of authentication with a token endpoint. Uh, we need a way to, uh, to add hosts, uh, from your Kubernetes clusters, right? So if there are new new hosts added to the Kubernetes cluster, you don't have to do anything on your storage backend. You just tell our, our driver uh, what the IQN is or the, the worldwide port name, and we will take care of that for you, right? And you obviously want to have the volume endpoint implemented as well. But all the snapshot and the snapshot groups and the volume groups is completely optional. So, um, the example uh, CSP implementation is uh, surrounded around TrueNOS 
TrueNAS core, right? And it's the successor of, of uh, FreeNAS, which is a, a bit of a tinkerer kind of uh, NAS appliance. And at the end of the day, it supports iSCSI, it has a REST API, and it can do snapshots with the, with the help of OpenCFS. And it's very tinker friendly, right? You can install it in a VM and be up and running in minutes. And, and at the end of the day, since this is an open source project, I thought that this was a good candidate to, to write a container storage provider for and basically prove the point that the HPCSI driver is a multi-platform, multi-vendor driver. So uh, I guess uh, we're ready for some cube cuddling. And as I mentioned, the uh, CSI driver is available on GitHub, but also the TrueNOS core uh, CSP is available on GitHub as well. It's an official uh, HP open source project. And as you can see, it's just written in Python. It is a very simple implementation of a REST API gateway that implements a few of the, uh, the endpoints. Uh, as I mentioned, I've implemented tokens, host, volumes, and the snapshot endpoint. And without boring you folks too much uh, with too much minutia, uh, I've actually already installed the HP CSI driver for Kubernetes. I installed it with the Helm chart. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to uh, deploy the TrueNAS CSP on the Kubernetes cluster. So I'm just going to grab this uh, manifest here. Uh, as you can see, I already have the CSI driver installed. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and create that. Next, there are a few details we need to take care of, right? So I need to tell um, the HP CSI driver where I can find uh, the uh, this particular backend, right? So the backend is the, the backend system. That, that is the IP address of my actual storage appliance. Uh, I uh, give a, a username and a password, and this is actually using an API token that I've generated uh, on the TrueNAS appliance. I'm going to go ahead and create that. Uh, and next, uh, I want to create a storage class, uh, and I will uh, point out all the different um, secrets that are needed for the uh, the official uh, SIG storage um, sidecars, uh, like the provisioner and the uh, publisher uh, and the expander and so forth, right? And then I have a few unique parameters that I need to take care of here. Uh, I want to specify where uh, where the root is on the um, on the TrueNAS appliance, right? So tank is my pool, and CSI is the data set I'm going to go create here in the, in the next uh, in the next steps to make sure that my volumes will end up in a place on the uh, backend where I want them. Uh, there's also a bunch of allow overrides here in the storage class, and I don't have time to go into that. And but all that is being uh, explained in the uh, documentation I'm going to show you later. Going to create that. Uh, next, I also want to create a uh, volume snapshot class, right? Because at the end of the day, we're here today to talk about the cloud native data management. And uh, of course, we want to be able to, to, to take a snapshot and, uh, and show some uh, cloning, uh, et cetera. And I just need to call out the secret again. <clears throat> I'm going to create that. There we go. Uh, next, I'm just going to log into the TrueNAS interface here and show you a few things here. Obviously, we need to have iSCSI uh, up and running. Uh, iSCSI configuration, you need, need a, a target configuration with a specific base name to ensure that uh, we can uh, find the specific targets when we discover them on the host. Uh, your portal needs to be configured uh, that you want to use, and it needs to be called hp-csi. This is all Minisha part of the documentation, right? And then I need to create a new data set, right? And this is where I will then drop my uh, block devices uh, that I'm going to present to my Kubernetes cluster. So back in my terminal here, I'm going to basically just install a very basic uh, installation of Redis. Uh, I'm going to create a new namespace and do a Helm install. My Redis, namespace Redis. Uh, I have a configuration file which omits the password. And let's see and wait if that comes up there. Yeah, we have a bunch of... Uh, persistent volume claims up already. Uh, the master is up, and that means that we can connect uh, to the Redis instance. I do that by simply port forwarding uh, the uh, connection up to my laptop. I run the Redis CLI. I'm going to set my key. I'm going to set that key to cloud native. I'm going to do a save to ensure that everything is flush to disk and to ensure that we can then create a snapshot and provision new PVCs from those snapshots. 
Back on the TrueNAS appliance, we can see that we have uh, three volumes that represent uh, the three uh, persistent volumes that we have in our Kubernetes cluster. And heading straight back to my terminal, uh, I want to create a, a bunch of snapshots on these volumes that just got created with the Redis deployment here. So the volume snapshot object, uh, we need to tell which persistent volume claim name we want to create a snapshot on. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Uh, and the next, I want to create new persistent volume claims from the snapshots I just created, right? And the key um, attributes here is the data source, right? So we point out the name uh, of the a data source, was, which is a volume snapshot uh, of a particular name. And the, we also need to specify the API group. All right, so kubectl create, uh, there we go. We have the PVCs, uh, they're up and running. And we can see now that we have uh, six PVCs bound and ready. And switching over to the TrueNAS appliance again, we will see that we have a bunch of snapshots. Great. And we can also see that we have uh, an additional set of volumes. Again, back at the terminal, we're just going to do another Redis deployment, but I'm just going to name it my clone instead of, instead of my Redis. And when it comes up, we should be able to connect to the Redis instance and we can uh, run Redis CLI and we will be able to see uh, the key that we inserted in, in the previous parent, right? And that is kind of like the presto, this is the demo, and this is how we uh, created a snapshot of a um, running application and created a new application from those snapshots and did some basic uh, rudimentary data management that is kind of the, the bread and butter if you want to add value to Kubernetes uh, to perform uh, backup and restore, disaster recovery, et cetera. So uh, the point I was making uh, earlier in the presentation is that our sales slide, slide now becomes your sales slide, right? So you can essentially write your own container storage provider, you put your logo there, and all of a sudden, all of these ecosystem components become available to you, right? But at the end of the day, what users really care about, right, is the stateful Kubernetes workloads, their applications. But it's also the day two operations are becoming very important, right? So you also get access to the data management partners like Commvault, Kasten, and Valero, right? Because all of a sudden, your users will be able to protect their workloads by creating snapshots on your storage appliance and will be able to ship those snapshots to, to an S3 bucket or an NFS data store somewhere. Who knows, right? I mean, this is a very uh, fast-paced uh, developing technology area with, within Kubernetes, right? So you will be able to transfer your workload from one Kubernetes cluster to another Kubernetes cluster, et cetera, et cetera, using these data management tools. So uh, what could potentially be next here, right? So obviously, this is a block storage framework. We have the NFS server provisioner, but we would be very excited if somebody would uh, implement native file system support, right? So if you have like an NFS storage appliance or, or a Ceph appliance or, or native cluster support, you name it, right? The, um, the possibilities are endless, right? Uh, and we want to add more additional sidecars to provide more value add maybe implement some sort of like unified QoS, very similar to what they have in OpenStack today. Uh, and some uh, CSP might work better over gRPC instead of HTTP, and uh, that would be a neat feature to have. Uh, we don't have any topology awareness today, and that would also be a very neat feature to have to do uh, policy um, topology-based uh, dynamic provisioning. Uh, object storage is also a very hot topic, right? And and that is uh, currently uh, uh, being uh, reviewed as a cap within uh, the Kubernetes project, right? And that will be also a neat feature to have in the HPCSI driver. So uh, where can you go next? So you will find all the doc documentation you will ever need uh, around the HPCSI driver, uh, both as an engineer, developer, or an end user at scott.hpdev.io. Uh, our developer community, you will be able to find on developer.hpe.com. They just got a brand new portal. It looks amazing. Just go there and uh, check it out. Uh, we got highly re relevant uh, content, and we have on-demand workshops and, and so forth. Uh, the entire team, you will also, also be able to find on uh, slack.hpdev.io. Uh, you sign up there, somebody approves it, and uh, off you go, uh, you will get access uh, to me and uh, a bunch of our engineers that are more than uh, happy to help you.